I've talked about this girl, I think, sometimes. Yeah, not a lot, but I've talked about her uh, in some videos saying that she is alright. Um, and I believe she was on uh, on a transition slide on a female, uh, you know, female singers of the of the last decade. And she was on there, or she was on a transition slide, something like that. And I was pretty pissed off about that because I I think she's good. she is a good singer. She only has I believe one record now and an EP. So that's not a lot, but still she has a really good voice. She's really young, but still she is really ta uh, talented. Um, and if she can make more songs like you know uh, Royal Royals and Tennis Lord, uh, I want to say Tennis Lord. Tennis court, then she really can go somewhere. You know, she can be one of the greatest of her generation, but we will have to see about that, about the longevity. But I do think if she if she's gonna, you know, continue this streak of you know good songs and uh, the recent record was pretty alright. If she can keep that up, she can really, you know, be an iconic singer. I really do hope that you know something like uh, Ariana Grande now is. So I really do hope that, you know, um, she gets a chance, she gets, you know, that popular, well, she's popular, but, you know, uh, maintain re a relevancy, uh, maintain a career, uh, maintain, um, you know, just, just pumping out uh, good stuff, quality, you know, quality pop music. Just uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Keeping keeping it keeping it consistent. I really do hope that she uh, does that, but who knows? We're gonna see. Uh, I'm not really familiar with uh, with Laura, so probably the thumbnail where she's looking at you like uh, uh, with a lot of lust, stuff like that. Yeah, she's uh, she's 70, 17 by the way. So uh, good luck with that. Um, yeah, but I do think uh, Royals is gonna be number one. That is an obvious choice. I mean, it is. Well, I want to say it is what Watch Mojo, but it is Miss Mojo. There we go. Tennis Court is go probably gonna be number two because those are the only two songs I know by Lord. But we're gonna see what's uh, on the list and enjoy. This New Zealander took the world by storm with the release of Pure Heroin. Request to buy music from, by the way. 2013 and hasn't shown any signs of slowing down. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Lord songs. Before we begin, we I do think, uh, you know, the beats on that are horrible, but I, but I do like her voice, though. It's a great voice. Subscribe to her shitty channel. Yeah, Ms. Mojo, I'm fucking done with you. Um, I'm gonna do Lord. Well, I'm not gonna do her, you know, in that way. Unfortunately, but... Um, I'm gonna do the list, that is what I meant, and I'm gonna do uh, the songs that everyone gets wrong, you know, the song meanings, something like that, was also requested by music fan. Those are the last two, and then I'm done, so there we go. I I didn't know that, I, d I didn't know, you know, when I clicked on the top 10 best Lord songs, that you're gonna discuss the top 10 best Lord songs. I couldn't figure that out for a moment. I, di I really couldn't. So, songs such as Magnets by Disclosure will not be considered. No, because she's featured on that. Fucking hell. The second single to be released from her sophomore album Melodrama, Perfect Places, was co written and produced with fellow singer songwriters Jack Antonoff and Andrew Wyatt. But seriously, who, who names their record, uh, their debut record, Pure, pure Heroin? Who does that? Yeah, Lord, but fuck no. If I'm really honest, this sounds really poppy. Poppy with a, with a kind of lazy beat to it. So I'm not really enjoying this, but her voice is good, so... It is just such a missed potential, you know. She can be one of the greatest now, but... Yeah, the production and everything... I do like this last part though, you know, when the, when the horrible beat goes away and you just have Lord and the piano. I really love that. But you know, the entire song, not for me. 
probably the entire record, you know. It's alright, but. Ooh, those are hit or miss, uh, hit or miss notes. Uh, the, this is definitely better than the number 10 spot. You know, just the violin and peaceful, uh, peaceful piano playing and Lord's voice. You gotta love that. Yeah, music fan was requesting this, of course. You know, he he knew that. Um, I thought Lord was alright, so he thought to himself, you know, uh, check out the list because I'm curious, or probably some of you are curious. Um, and I'm actually, you know, I'm kind of in the middle right now. I, I didn't like the first song. Uh, I do like this song though. I think this is a great song. Well, I think it's good, you know, decent. But yeah, we have to see, you know, the other songs to really uh, decide to, you know, get my opinion about her. But I do like the artist overall. I do like Lord. You know, compared to fucking shit, shit stains like Melina Martinez and Lana Del Rey. That, that's fucking horrible. Lord at least is listenable. And you know, Ariana Grande. Number eight, liability. Says it was poison. Similar to Writer in the Dark, this track is just Lord and a piano. But that only serves to accentuate the story she's telling. Liability is a straight up confession. Lord rips open her heart and lays bare all the issues that she's currently struggling with. The truth is, I am a toy. People enjoy to all of the tricks. Don't Dark lyrics, holy shit. I'm a tool that people enjoy. But that doesn't seem to matter. Something like that, holy shit. Is more than enough to carry it from start to finish. So they pull back, make other plans. I understand, I'm alive. She sings really clearly, so I can really, you know, hear the lyrics. Because, uh, you know, some bands and some artists really sing bizarre. And then you can't really hear them or hear what they say. But you really can hear that with, uh, with Laura. She really has a, a good speaking voice. A good singing voice. Oh, they... Uh, yeah, I would say they, they aren't heartbreaking for me. But they are really, you know... They're good lyrics. They really evoke with the story. This is Dan, of course, right? Number seven, nope. Plus. But it is from Pure Heroin, so there we go. That fucking name. From the the kicks in, I, do, I do like the production better on Pure Heroin, though. Now it sounds sketchy, it sounds like it's from the um, late 70s, early 80s, it really has that vibe to it, you know, the production can be can be better, can, can be pitched up a bit, but I do like the overall beat though, it is better than melodrama, I, I can say that. I think that record is way too, uh, well not way too, but it is a bit generic, I, I do like the production on this better. A lot of people watch Lord. It's pretty impressive that you can have such a big crowd in just a few months, right? You know, nobody knows Lord and suddenly she has royals in front of you. It's pretty spe spectacular. Yeah, I, I do like the songs more though. These uh, songs from Pure Heroin. Popular tracks from Lord's debut album. The song was a precursor to some of the New Zealand artists' later work, blending her signature vocals with a truly unique and somewhat tropical beat. The song's lyrics are 
experts rail against the modern world, lambasting men up on the news and explosions on TV. But it's probably a bit of a rushed arm, you know, the arm cover is really bland, just, you know, Lord with the name. Not any image or something, so it is a bit of a bland album cover. The songs on this are actually really good, but they're all kind of the same. They have the same beat. Uh, they're all produced the same, so... Um, you know, I'm not really feeling it towards um, the album, but I still think the songs are good. Hi, I'm Lord. Love is all Lord. That is the greatest moment, and it's not even from Lord. Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely know this song. This was on so many adverts. Yeah, the thing is, I do like the song. I do like Lord. But you know the beat. I just don't like the beat. It's it's so you know generic. I don't know what it is because the beat sounds alright, I guess, but it sounds so mainstream. I I I don't know what it is. It sounds too normal, too too bland. Uh, yeah, well, I do think that, you know, I enjoy uh, the debut album a bit more because the production was a bit more special, it was a bit more of her, of her own. And on Mellow Drama it really sounds like, you know, she has thrown that sound away and she's going now for a more typical commercial sound, which is really disappointing because she is a special artist. At least one I, yeah, I do think that it is missed potential. I do, I do think that. Yeah, tennis court. Number four, tennis court. Not number two. Not number two. It's such a weird feel, yeah. Yeah. The song is a mixture of various genres, including hip hop, alternative pop, and EDM. Hip hop. I wouldn't say so, but still. This video is so weird. It's a great song, I love it. <laughs> that last part. Damn. Not number one. Not number one. Good, good job, Miss Mosier. You're a bit not normy. Bit less normy. Yeah, she was like 16 in that, right? In a video where two guys fight over or just fight for fun, something like that. Yeah, it, it is quick, uh, quickly written though. I've heard that. It's a great song. Oh, it's the final song. So the bald woman, really? I'm not saying anything, but what the fuck? Yeah, unless she has, you know, that is kind of cringe, but hey, I don't know.
before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable yeah, mentions. I, I do think that is the ultimate track because it is still a beat in a way and it is also really uh, melancholic. So I think that is the ultimate song from that record. But Royals is number one, that is really interesting. Uh, homemade Dynamite from Meadow Drama. Rip from Pure Heroin. Glory and Gore from Pure Heroin. I've heard the song before a few times. In fact, the song was so popular that when the music video was released, it crashed the Vivo channel on YouTube. Team is alternative pop at its best, combining meaningful lyrics with a beat that just won't quit. The passion in Lord's voice is enough to give even her most ardent critic chills. It is a nice song. Ugh, that is horrible. Um, yeah, one one thumbnail where she's at the Graham Norton show and she wears a, f yeah. Um, how how do you say that? I'm not sure. She wears something really huge and really stupid in her hair, you know, as usual, and she's having a really big smile. Uh, I'm not sure why she does that. Well, because she wants attention and stuff. But yeah, that was really, 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 uh, yeah, really dumb thumbnail. But I did enjoy the list, though. Um, yeah, team. I know the song, but I, I, but I did forget it. That's why I didn't mention it at the beginning. But I did enjoy the video. Um, yeah, I, I do think that Pure Heroin is still her better record. You know, melodrama. It sounds a bit too conventional in my opinion. Pure Heroin is more unique, more Lord-like, if that, if that makes any sense. But I still really enjoyed it, so I hope you've enjoyed this list as well. And now I'm gonna do the last Miss Mojo video ever. The songs, the songs meaning meanings everyone gets wrong. Yeah, but this is also, yeah. Miss Mojo have made, you know, the top 10 chain smoker song, so fuck off Miss Mojo. But I'm gonna do that list and then I'm um, done with the channel, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think about it and, uh, you know, flip off Miss Mojo as well because they are a piece of, piece of shit. <coughs> and I do hope that you stay, you know, watching these videos, these videos because I do enjoy them. Uh, if they're good, you know. Not all of them are good, but this one was pretty good. That's what I'm trying to say here. Uh, yeah, enjoy the video, guys. Enjoy the videos, guys, and take care.